Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. In today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Vanda Dashkova. Vanda earned her bachelor's degree at LMU, where she carried out undergraduate research in the group of Thomas Carroll. She subsequently completed her master at the same university, during which time she worked in the Trauner Group, and also carried out research in the Lisk Group at the Max Planck Institute. Currently, she is a PhD student at the Faringa Group at the University of Groningen. Thank you, Wanda, for joining us, and the floor is yours. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the kind introduction and for giving me the opportunity to participate in this Research Spotlight episode. I am very happy to share with you the work that we have done in the Feringa Group on self-resolving alpha phosphonates. In asymmetric synthesis, the development of enantioselective transformations is often hampered by the tedious task of quantitative determination of the enantiomeric purity. The difficulties lie on the fact that enantiomers are in principle indistinguishable in an achiral environment. In this context, an chiral HPLC is undoubtedly the technique of choice by most experimental practitioners. Alternatively, chiral derivatizing and chiral solvating agents have been successfully used not only for the determination of enantiomeric composition, but also for the elucidation of the absolute configuration of sterogenic centers. However, considering a scenario where intermolecular interactions between enantiomers come into play, the formation of diasteromeric homo and heterochiral aggregates can be anticipated. In such case, this transient diasteromeric relationship can potentially provide new opportunities for the analysis and separation of enantiomers by simple spectroscopic or physicochemical techniques. In the field of asymmetric catalysis, aggregation is often seen as a villain, causing misinterpretation of results, so let me change your mind by telling you a story about how aggregation can make our life easier. In the late 60s, Williams and co-workers discovered the proton spectra of enantiopure and racemic dihydrokinin were different. Furthermore, uh, the NMR of its Scully mixture showed formation of two sets of peaks, whose relative ratio matched the enantiomeric purity of dihydrokinin. This often overlooked phenomenon was called self-induced testosteromic anisochromism, abbreviated as SIDA. Since then, a number of compounds, including some chiral amides, carboxylic acids, amines, alcohols, ureas, phosphorus and sulfur-based compounds, and some natural products, have been reported to show this effect. While the observation of this phenomenon is usually serendipitous, all these chiral compounds display an evident structural feature. It is the presence of self-complementary hydrogen bond donor and acceptor groups next to a stereogenic center. This characteristic is ultimately responsible for formation of homo and heterochiral aggregates with different physicochemical properties and so different NMR spectra. To explain the SIDA effect in more detail, let's consider a system composed of two enantiomers, R and S, that reversibly form dimers in solution. The situation can be described using the following equilibria. R and S enantiomers as monomers or as heterochiral dimers, RS, as shown in equation 1, or homochiral dimers, RR, and SS, as shown in equation 2 and 3 respectively. In a scenario where fast exchange happens between monomeric and dimeric species in the NMR scale, two sets of peaks would appear in the NMR spectra. Specifically, one set of peaks that corresponds to the weighted average of the three species where R enantiomer is present, R, RR and RS, as you can see in equation 4, and another set of peaks corresponding to the weighted average of the three species where S enantiomer is present, S, SS and RS, as you can see in equation 5. In these equations, delta observed stands for the average chemical shifts for each set of signals observed in the NMR, deltas are the chemical shifts and xis are the molar fractions of certain species in the equilibrium. From these equations, it becomes evident that a change in the enantiomeric ratio of scalemic mixture will alter the position of the equilibria shown in equation 1, 2, 3, and consequently change the chemical shift of the two sets of peaks. As a result, racemic and enantiopure solutions of a chiral compound show different NMR spectra, and in case of scalemic mixture, where EE ranges between 0 and 100%, Two sets of peaks are observed and integration of the signals provides directly the ER, 
Furthermore, formation of diastereomeric aggregates might cause not only different NMR spectra, but also physical chemical properties, such as solubility, melting point, boiling point, and so on, which can result in spontaneous fractionation of enantiomers. This phenomenon has been previously explored by our group in context of the origin of homochirality as a possible mechanism to readily increase the enantiomeric purity of amino acids by sublimation or phosphoramidides by preferential dissolution under prebiotically relevant conditions. Based on these precedents, in this project we aim to implement these striking stereochemical phenomena to the development of new asymmetric transformations and prove they can significantly simplify the analysis of scaly mixtures and provide an easy route to highly enantioenriched compounds. For that, we envision alpha oreido phosphonates as an ideal system to study, as they possess self-complementary hydrogen bond donor and acceptor groups separated by a stereogenic center, potentially leading to self-induced recognition of enantiomers. Additionally, we conceived the asymmetric synthesis of these previously unexplored compounds by an enantioselective hydrophosphonylation of readily available alkylidine ureas. To confirm our hypothesis that alpha phosphonates can form homo- and heterochylal aggregates, we first needed to prepare the enantioenriched material. As their asymmetric synthesis has never been reported before, we conceived a preliminary multi-step sequence starting from bog protected imine S1. Its reported hydrophosphonylation in presence of kinin resulted in protected aminophosphonate S2 with 92-10 ER. Subsequent deprotection and coupling with phenyl isocyanate resulted in the desired uredophosphonate 1. Upon analysis by proton and phosphorus NMR of the crude mixture in chloroform, we clearly observed the formation of two sets of peaks whose integration matched the expected enantiomeric ratio 91 to 9. Further analysis by Carl HPLC confirmed the observed ER. These results indicated that alpha oreido phosphonates might be aggregating in solution and indeed show SIDA effect. It is known uh, that SIDA strongly depends on dielectric constant of the medium. Therefore, we performed a systematic study to disclose in which solvents compound 1 showed splitting of the NMR signals. As mentioned before, compound 1 showed SIDA in both proton and phosphorus NMR. However, highly polar solvents such as DMSO disrupted intermolecular hydrogen bonding interactions and led to the disappearance of the SIDA effect. From other tested solvents, we were able to observe SIDA in deuterated chloroform, DCM, toluene, acetone and acetonitrile, while in DMSO, methanol and DMF no SIDA was detected. To showcase the accuracy of SIDA for the determination of enantiomeric purities, we prepared samples with different enantiomeric ratios and submitted them to proton and phosphorus NMR and also to chiral HPLC. Finally, the obtained values matched perfectly among the different methods and phosphorus NMR spectroscopy proved to be particularly suitable thanks to the excellent separation of the two sets of peaks for a wide range of ERs. To shed some light on the origin of these observations, a combined experimental and theoretical study was performed to analyze the structure of the form aggregates. First, diffusion ordered spectroscopy dose measurement allowed us to calculate the diffusion coefficients of alpha oridophosphonate 2 in both DMSO and chloroform and estimate the molecular weight of the species formed in these two solvents. Thus, the resulted estimated molecular weight in DMSO proved to be in a good agreement with the molecular weight of a monomer. Will the estimated molecular weight of 865 gram per mole in chloroform suggested formation of dimeric structure? Overall, this data is in excellent agreement with the observation of the SIDA effect in chloroform, where aggregation is expected and not in the MSO. Next, we perform a single crystal X-ray diffraction analysis which revealed clear intermolecular interactions between two alpha oreidophosphonate in an antiparallel head-to-tail orientation. More precisely, both an H group of one urea engage in hydrogen bond interactions with the phosphonate of another molecule. Additionally, DFT calculations indicated that such head-to-tail disposition 
is greatly preferred over the monomeric form and over the other parallel orientations typically observed in ureas. Finally, we analyzed the binding isotherms obtained by NMR titration of both racemic and enantio-enriched uraidophosphonate 2. The obtained association constants of 10 to the 3 molar minus 1 further proved the ability of these compounds to undergo dimerization in solution. Having understood the behavior of our materials, we move to the second part of the project, which is harnessing their aggregation properties as an analytical tool for reaction development. We first fully optimized the hydrophosphonylation reaction of alkylidine urea S3 with diethyl phosphide. The best conditions proved to be chiral tipsy catalyst, deoxygenated toluene and temperature of 30 degrees. Important to emphasize is that during the whole optimization process and later during the scope investigation, proton and phosphorus NMR were used for the determination of enantiomeric purity. This way, we were able to avoid time-consuming development of chiral HPLC separation methods. Having the optimal conditions in hand, we first tested the reaction generality using different phosphides. Compared to other previously reported hydrophosphonylation reactions, wide range of phosphides were well tolerated. The best results were obtained using dimethyl phosphide, giving the product in 88% yield and 94 to 6 ER. Next, we analyzed the variations of the alkylidine urea backbone by introducing both electrodonating and electron withdrawing groups in different positions. We were pleased to observe that the reaction tolerated not only electron poor and electron rich aromatic groups, but also the presence of unprotected phenol and heteroaromatic group. Finally, if the enantiomeric ratios are not sufficiently high, we observe that alpha uridophosphonates also undergo spontaneous fractionation of enantiomers. As a result of the formation of diastereomeric dimers, the enantiomeric purity could be readily increased by a chiral column chromatography, resulting in highly enantioenriched fractions of up to 97% EE. Alternatively, the spontaneous separation of enantiomers can also be achieved by harnessing the different solubility of the homo- and heterochiral dimers in organic solvents. Thus, precipitation from saturated solution of compound 1 in hexane isopropanol mixture gave nearly racemic solid fraction, while the supernatan showed a remarkable increase of enantiopurity. These experiments showcase the potential of spontaneous fractionation of enantiomers to obtain highly enantioenriched compounds by employing inexpensive purification methods. In conclusion, I hope I was able to convince you that aggregation of enantiomers can be very beneficial, as it can open new avenues in the design of asymmetric transformations. Specifically, it can lead to the SIDA effect, allowing direct determination of ER by simple NMR experiment, and the spontaneous fractionation of enantiomers, resulting in increased optical purity by inexpensive physicochemical techniques. We have described an entirely new family of compounds, alpha phosphonates, that show such self-resolving properties. A combined experimental and computational work confirmed the formation of stable homo- and heterochiral dimers by self-complementary hydrogen bonding. Moreover, such self-resolving properties were systematically applied to the development of the first enantioselective hydrophosphonylation of alkylidine ureas to alpha phosphonates leading to the discovery of the largest family of self-resolving compounds reported to date. With this, I would like to finish and thank these two men, first and foremost, to Professor Ben Feringa for being my PhD supervisor and for being a very inspiring and enthusiastic scientist, to Damian Padin for working with me on this project, to the University of Groningen and the technical staff for their support, of course, to our funding agencies, and finally, thank you, Matt, for having me on this great show and to you all for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Amanda, for your great heart. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can help us out by subscribing and telling your peers about this channel. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date and join us next time.